What's up YouTube? Today we're looking at an OKC knife. Um, not just this one, but several. And we're going to check them out a little bit. Um, so this video is primarily for this one, if that's why you've tuned in. And this one would be the Kepart knife that they uh, sell for a very reasonable price. I think I got this maybe $20, $30. They uh, kind of used a tumble, lightly tumbled finish. This is a flat grind. I think historically that's what it was as well. This little guard right here, in my opinion, is basically just there to let you know I have this part of the knife, you know, edge-faced away from me. Uh, like on a Claymore, it would say front toward enemy. This, they have this instead. Um, and that's going to be handy because I was actually out doing a little bit of work with this and uh what was weird was i was actually weeding and um, these weeds are like they were huge and so i'm kind of like you know whittling away at them or if i can um there's one point you know i it, i was just tired and not paying attention but i was like i had stood up thrown something gone back to business and i think i had my knife in my hand when i threw it so i brought it back and somehow it got turned around on me and I, I didn't, I wasn't really paying attention. And for a second, I was trying to like bite into this thing, uh, this, this weed. And I remembered, oh yeah, like maybe I have to, someone had said because of how the knife is shaped, you kind of have to feel around for the edge or something. I, I'm probably messing up that quote, but, uh, cause it is a flag, Ryan. It's not necessarily complicated. But so it took, it took me a second. I had to look and be like, oh, wait, I have just totally messed that up. And honestly, I was messing around with um, this Kephart knife and pressed on the back. And that's why I have this bandage because it was actually like right here. Luckily, I caught it real early into the bite. So um, not that big of a deal. Well, you're going to see some similarities, though, in between this cap art and other cap arts, obviously. This is the their bird and trout knife. And I actually bought this knife originally on accident, thinking I was buying this, because they look so similar when it comes to the blade profile. Obviously, this one has more belly, a little higher point. Um, but the bottom line is it's not that hard to mistake them. They look very similar. Um, this one is a little bit more upturned, but, uh, yeah, it's not that this knife isn't going to work and it's not that it's a bad knife. It's just that I feel like a lot of the things I've seen as far as reviews, they don't really answer all the questions. This is just me, right? I'm not saying I know all the answers to how to do reviews. But this guy, this is the hunting knife. Um, obviously you can see this is like a five incher. This is like uh, exactly, I think it is four and a half. I'm not 100%. Um, let me see. No, this is four inches. This is four and a half. So this is five and a half, I think. Um, when it comes to how big some of these knives are, when they're all kind of in the same class, so to speak, um, it comes down, you know, we're, we're not looking at, well, at least right here, category, price, you're kind of in the same area. This is 1075, this is 1095, this is ADC2V, which is the best deal on the table, um, and then this, well, actually, and then this, and then this, but this kind of depending. Um, I should say in desirability, um, that's more of a desirable thing because this 1075 has its place and it is basically just a lower grade version of this. This is Swedish saw steel. Um, what it is exactly? I'm, or I just said, yeah, uh, I guess the other Swedish saw st or saw steel I was thinking of is the, um, I think it's the ACE or the, no, it's the L7 in the Swedish knife, the peasant knife. Um, by that one company whose name escapes me. Sword is what it is, I think. Bottom line, so this is the deal, and I can't rush through this. Uh, this will be a long video. The, this, this guy, the 1095, 
is badass, right? Obviously, that's why it's so preferred. However, you got to kind of keep in mind that 1075 is going to be a legit tougher steel. Um, I've seen a, a, some people in videos doing this, and it's actually like you can bend this knife quite a bit and uh, not get close to, to doing any, obviously, if we're not supermen, real damage. This one's a little stiffer. Um, and that kind of makes sense considering what steel it is. Uh, this stuff is kind of its own little beast. Um, I'm actually, well, I'll keep it on the table because when you're, when you're looking at all things together, this guy, I don't think that you're going to need one, another, uh, uh, sheath right off the bat. But I know everybody's like, it comes with this insert. It comes with this. Yeah, dude, the insert. It's just not that, listen, this is adequate, but like you're seeing, this thing is ginormous and, and putting this in your pocket, say if you sit down, you're at the camp or something, or you're doing whatever, this is exactly what happened. It goes in like this and then it ends up, you know, tear, or cutting out part of the sheath or at least the plastic part. What really saves it is how long it is. It's more of a shoot than a guard. Um, so you gotta be careful with this one. These don't really hang on your belt that well. They move around a lot. Um, besides that, this this dude, whoa, this dude is pretty decent. I feel like as far as the sheath, um, the only real issue is that you know it's the, the, there's a lot of movement. This one stays put a little better because it's longer, uh, and you're definitely going to be pushing that in more than than I see people. They're afraid to, like, on videos, they're afraid to push this in all the way. You're going to want to jam that in there. Um, this does have a real good amount of retention if you jam it in there. If you don't, and some of people, if you watch their videos, they are not, um, then it's just going to come right out. This retention is is good. Like, this not coming out. And I do like both of these knives. If you're looking to buy in those knives, I would say go. Uh, this retention... So, yeah, this retention is better. But also, this is a Kydex sheath made specifically for this by somebody on eBay who's a hobbyist or running a store, but does a really good job with this. And uh, so, this is only 22 bucks. This is shipped. Well, shipped might be 25 right? Without the sheath, though. Without the sheath. Sheath is 35 Um So, for 50 bucks, you've bought something that if you lose this, Easily, this is the Condor Timberjack, easily replaced. Um, this is three and three quarter inches. This is three, or this is uh, five and a half. And then this is four and a half. So this is a hundred dollar version of a Kepart. And it's from Brisa is stamping these blanks. I don't really know. I know and this is obviously carbon steel ADC RV2. Um, over in the Finland area, they uh, some well, some company stamps all the blanks, or maybe a couple do, but um, some companies are getting you know buying the blanks obviously and then treating them, um, handling them. So this. I like a lot. This is a great knife. It has red liners. It's perfectly flush the whole way around. It has the three rivets. By the way, these handles, they do have a rivet driven through or drilled through the blank. Um, but I guess we're going to get to that in a second. When you are modding these, you're going to have to decide if you want to do that. This is already done, obviously. It's got everything you need um put a lanyard on it this glows hang on okay i'm in i'm in a different shooting location shooting location than my regular but my normal stuff so i don't i would turn the lights off that will glow and it has a sheath that is very like much like a puku sheath it's traditional to that area it makes sense it's got these rivets it's going to hold it together it uses that channeling effect to keep from this from popping out. It is leather, so at some point, I mean, I put Renaissance wax on my stuff, so like, 
obviously that's what you would want to do. Not because I do it, but because um, that's what museums use. And so your stuff is going to be much more resilient. I won't be, I won't have to check this a lot for rust is what I'm getting at. Long rambly way to get there. Eventually you're going to want to look at these guys and probably put a patina on them. Um, I would just go ahead and buy some gun blue. I would do the entirety of the blade after you wash it off with uh, either alcohol or I know this is a lot less popular, but acetone is going to be a little bit better at dissolving stuff like, oh yeah, the super glue that got on it because I was like, oh shit, maybe I should try to super glue that to the side. But it doesn't matter. I mean, this sheath is, I like it. I like this sheath. Let me, let me put it that way. But unfortunately, it doesn't really encompass what needs to happen totally um, because there's what, what really is the killer is that if you're reaching back, you're, there's this motion that is not so protective that, you know, the edge is biting into it, right? And that's why that happens. Whereas on this one, it's kind of making you, it's, you're not coming in like this. It's making you push straight in. I'm not saying that you can't, but like, it's just, it's, this is a long piece. I mean, it's, I totally get why they did it. Brace yourself for more knives. Cause we've got here, I believe the seven inch or the 10 inch. Well, I guess we could probably find out pretty easily. Uh, where's so five and a half. Yeah. I think this is the seven inch. Um, and you can see there are some similarities. So this has a swedge and this does not. This is very much like there is not, this is literally, I mean, if I were to slam this into you, would I hurt you? This is not good. This is not a piercing mechanism. Do you understand? I mean, really this is, and the reason it is, is because they put some time and techno technological uh, research and they this is very well done this swedge is it, it sounds listen i get it it sounds silly to be like the swedge on this 20 dollar knife 25 dollar knife is uh is amazing but the, the the deal is is that really i would say so this like i said is a is about a 20 dollar knife with another sheath that is decent um this is a 28 dollars knife like i said this is about 100 from dlt 110 with shipping although i mean they, they do the whole like oh if you go over 100 it's free but i mean i know what it is uh and this is like 10 bucks maybe 15 bucks this is 10.95 um you might have noticed that it's an old hickory knife the old hickory knives have all the same design language so to speak and uh so i have the 14 incher 14 inch blade coming in all i'm gonna black out the whole series um i mean you folks if you have been watching uh know what i'm talking about when i say the whole series and we're gonna go from there because i'm gonna have these knives long term these are the kind of knives you flip, so to speak. I mean, look at if... Ooh, that doesn't even fit. Wow, yeah, I'm glad I did this. That doesn't even fit. Like, not even a little bit. And they really... Dude. It just goes to show how much knife you're really getting. And it's, like, kind of impressive. Hopefully this is all on camera. I have not done this before. Yeah, there we go. You can see side to side. So the bigger one, th this this will continue to scale up. What that means is it will get thicker. It will be choppier, right? But this thing, I mean, it is a cutting blade. Um, I don't have any paper around me. Oh. So 
So I mean, it works. I don't know if I'd shave my my fucking arm with this though, right? So that's kind of the, the deal is that as far as value for money, and if you're wanting to outfit your kitchen with a lot of like fun stuff, um, I got a special sheath for this guy coming in. It probably, I'm gonna try to cover it, carry it behind my back, like say if I'm in a park that allows it. I have to look up those laws. But uh, <laughs> I could say this is a hunting knife. I mean, I would definitely use it to stick a, uh, a wild pig. Um, but as you're seeing, there's a variety of blades that are well made and all have the same design language and all are made in America. This is 1095. Um, you might have to rehandle it at some point, but basically what, either, if you're not really willing to like, you know, continue to retighten these with a ball peen, which probably most of us won't have an issue with, honestly, if you're buying these kind of knives, you're probably pretty handy. Um, epoxying these on using screws and then use and drilling that third hole. Um, man, is it that what's the joke with the ARs? It's the fifth hole or is it the fourth hole that makes it automatic? Anyway, this is not about guns and that's a joke. It's not an actionable thing legally. Um, you could also get like super cool wood, screw it on, um, and then contour it or you could just keep it the same I, I, I don't know what I'm going to do yet um, what I am going to really hopefully people do this if you're doing anything with these guys where you could hurt yourself um, air on the side of caution this thing is very sharp <laughs> air on the side of caution and tape them off with masking tape I know it's lame and it but the bottom line is is that uh you're very likely, not very likely. I was probably if if there was a weird hypothetical world where the statistics were kept of when people cut themselves that use knives on the regular or no stranger to knives and edged things, I would bet it would be um, well if they're improperly handling it obviously, but cleaning it, maintenance, um, you know, it's worth being fairly sober for some of some of this stuff. Uh, I don't know how many people out there had have motorcycles or had motorcycles. Um, so you always got to be sober working on your bike or it's just not going to go that well. Uh, I would probably give your fingers the same consideration. Because you can buy a new bike, but you can't buy a new finger. Bikes are a little bit more forgiving, though. In any event, this is a long video. Everyone is welcome that I did this. I'm sweating like a pig in my kitchen. Um, it's all she wrote. If you're looking for value and whatnot, um, this would be a good place to start. And uh, I don't know if Brissa makes anything else, but I really do like these maple, I think they were, handles. Very well done, and uh, fit and finish is very good. And 100 bucks is a steal for a big chunk of this steel, no pun intended. And uh, it's just well done. It's exactly what I would want to have the end product be like. And then this is from County Com. This is from County Com as well. So is this. This is this is like a little paracord lanyard that happened to just barely fit. This is a little knurled bead. And then this glows in the dark. That's it.